Okay, here is a Faraday's Law problem. Uh, I mostly made this up. It's based on some other problems, uh, but let's just get right to it. So here's the idea. I have a bar magnet, and I move it from this position to this position. From I call that Z1 and that Z2. And then there's a coil of wire right there, and I guess that's hooked up to a voltmeter. And I want to measure the, uh, the induced EMF because I moved that in there. So this has to do with Faraday's Law. So I'm going to write down the best definition of Faraday's law. It says this. If I integrate E dot DL around that loop, so E dot DL, normally uh, in circuits that would be zero. The change in uh, the voltage around the loop is zero, but it's not here. Okay, That's going to be equal to negative DDT, the time rate of change of the magnetic flux, B dot N hat DA. So let's just change this. This is the flux. That's Faraday's law. But I can write the flux as just, let's call this uh, equals negative DDT of the flux. And in fact, if since we're dealing with finite positions in the time, I'm going to assume that the flux changes at a constant rate. I'm just going to write this as negative delta flux over delta T. So if I can calculate the magnetic flux here, calculate the magnetic flux here, divide by the time, I'm done. Okay, because this is EMF. EMF is E dot DL. That's all I need to do. Okay, so <clears throat> let's calculate the flux Z1 and Z2. Um, so I've given some parameters here. So here mu is the magnetic dipole moment of the bar magnet. So if I have a bar magnet, and I treat it as a dipole, then it has a, a field that looks like an electric dipole. And so this, if we're on the axis of that dipole, I can write B uh, dipole. The magnitude is going to be mu naught over 4 pi. That's the magnetic constant. Uh, 2 mu over Z cubed, where mu is that dipole moment right there. So now to calculate the flux, I'm going to assume that the magnetic field is constant over this region, which is not true, okay? But otherwise, it'd get really, really difficult to do. I, I think I could do this numerically, and I want to do this numerically, uh, but for now, let's just do this um, as an approximation. So if I know the, the magnitude of the magnetic field, and I'll assume it's going that way, and I can calculate the area of that disk. Uh, so it's just going to be the magnetic field, mu naught over 4 pi, 2 mu over z cubed uh, times the area, which is going to be pi rc squared. So rc is the radius of that coil. Uh, but then I have to also multiply that by n, the number of loops, which I did not give. So let's say n equals um, 100. I'm just picking a number there. I don't really care about the numbers. I don't know about you, but I don't really care about the numbers. So that's the flux in terms of z. So if I want to find flux 1, I put in z1. If I want to find flux 2, I put in z2. Simple. So now I can get the EMF. EMF is just going to be the change in flux. So it's going to be flux 2. So it's going to be mu naught over 4 pi, 2 mu, um, and then I'm going to put in here pi rc squared n times 1 over z2 cubed minus 1 over z1 cubed. See what I did there? I factored out. All these things don't change as I move that thing forward. The only thing that changes is that. And then all that I need to divide by delta t. And that's it. That's my induced EMF. Now what about the negative sign? The negative sign just means that the direction of the induced electric field is such that it opposes the change in the magnetic flux. So here, if I'm moving it this way, my flux is increasing this way. So my delta flux is this way. So the coil wants to make an electric current, if it made one, that would make a magnetic field going this way. So using the right-hand rule, that means my electric field would be going uh, into the board right there, out of the board right there. It's not a board, it's a piece of paper. Okay, so I guess I need to calculate this um, into this equation. And uh, I'm not prepared to do that. Let me switch my, my, uh, 
my computer over here because I don't want to do this in the calculator because I don't like calculators. I can use Python. So let's just jump over here to Python. All I need to do is type in this equation and then put all my values in and I'll get a, an expression for that. So let's switch over here to Python really quick. <clears throat> computer, there we go. Okay, Python. I've got a I've got a Python script already opened up. So let's just put in all my constants. Km is 1 times 10 to the negative 7. This is going to be mu naught over 4 pi. Okay, I'm going to call it Km just because it's easier to do it that way. Now I'm going to say n equals 1. I'm just typing in what I have. Mu equals 0 0.7. There's no units here because this is Python. Um, RC equals 0 0.01. Uh, Z1, 0 0.15. Z2 equals 0 0.1. DT equals 0 0.2. Okay, so now I can say EMF equals, I'm just going to type in the equation, KM times 2 times mu times pi times RC squared times N. I'm going to put the N on this side because I get, I get scared. Um, all of that, let's see, divided by DT. And then all that, I'll put a parenthesis right here, times 1 divided by z2 cubed minus 1 divided by z1 cubed. And then I'm going to say print emf equals emf volts. And I'm going to run it. And, and maybe you see how awesome Python is for a calculator here, but it is. And so I get a voltage of 1.5 times 10 to the negative fourth volts. That's it. That's done. <clears throat> let me switch back to paper and let me show you a slightly different version of this. Uh, because I was going to do this. I was going to give a velocity here, uh, and which would be kind of fun. And then <clears throat> I wouldn't have a delta phi over delta t. I'd have to actually take the derivative. If I take the derivative of this z with respect to t, I'm going to get a velocity term, but I'm going to get still get a v term. So I could get the v in terms of the z in terms of v, and there'd be a time in the equation. I think I might do that problem just because I think it's very interesting. Um, but that would still assume that the magnetic field's constant over that region. So there you go. Faraday's law.